behalf of the International Institute of Natural Wellness Education, it's my privilege to welcome you to this e-learning module on understanding five element theory. Specifically, this is our part one module on the fire element. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with five element theory, it's a way to look at the body as a whole. It, you know, there's been a lot of talk out there about personality typing um, with the colors, you know, blue and red and yellow and white and different personality characteristics that is really fun for people to understand what makes each other tick. This assessment, this understanding of five element theory predates that by thousands of years and is so much more vast. It's, it's like personality typing on steroids. It helps you understand why certain people have um, genetic predispositions to illnesses, why they like to do certain activities to relax and to calm down. It helps you understand why people interact better with certain types of people. It really gives you a much, a much bigger picture of who we are and what, like I said, what makes us tick. So I'm really honored to uh, present this to you today. This is Dr. Hollis. I'm Executive Director here at the International Institute of Natural Wellness Education, nationally board certified naturopath and a, with a diploma in nephropathy. Now, before I go on, I need to make sure you're aware that by proceeding, you agree to all of these terms of use, especially that all information and statements provided here have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration, are not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure any disease, are for informational purposes only. And by proceeding, you agree not to attempt to apply any principle or practice outlined herein unless you are otherwise licensed to do so. Now, this lecture is one that we're making available. Um, a lot of our lectures we make available for um, people to audit and watch online just to get an idea about our programs. But you need to understand that this is a part of our Master Herbology and Advanced Nutrition program. So you're essentially coming in the back of the auditorium and sitting down and, and participating in a class with students that are, that are dedicating themselves to understanding the form and function of the body and what, uh, how it works. So well, um, I want to mention one thing that ties into this, and that's the fundamental difference in natural wellness. So for those of you that are, are not our normal students but are just watching online, you need to make sure you're clear on this fundamental difference. There seems to be a real mistaken understanding out there that the only difference between natural wellness and traditional medical intervention um, is what we use. They, we use herbs, they use um, drugs. That is, couldn't be farther from the truth. I greatly respect my brothers and sisters in medicine and for the time and devotion that they dedicate to understanding ways to intervene in emergencies. But you need to understand the major difference. The internet is littered with outlandish claims of, of healing techniques that are just so far-fetched. And the reason being is because people don't understand the fundamental difference. That, that modern medicine looks at a group of symptoms and comes up with a drug, a surgery, or some other intervention to prevent that group of symptoms from progressing. What we're looking at as, a, as an herbalist, as a master herbalist, advanced nutrition consultant, as a naturopath, as a traditional um, Chinese um, doctor, what you're looking at is what caused that imbalance, the genesis, if you will. And so we're looking at dysfunction, at uh, imbalances, at nutritional depletion, all a whole different category. So one group of things, you know, a group of symptoms like can't sleep might all have the same drug that forces you to go to sleep, but that doesn't mean that the same imbalance is causing you to not be able to sleep. So you can't just quickly search for natural sleep remedies. You will find a thousand different ones, every one of which have worked for a few people, none of which will work for everybody. So why we have this, under, or this idea that we should go to school and dedicate ourselves to learning for a job, but for some reason we don't owe the same to our wellness is beyond me. We cannot expect to really know how to treat this body, how to balance our wellness from a few YouTube videos. So whether you decide to stay with us 
Um, we, you know, we invite you to look at what we're doing in our Master Herbology and Advanced Nutrition program. We're very confident and very honored with the professors that teach for us. Or whether you go through somebody else, what I want you to hear today is please, if this excites you, if being able to watch and be a part of this class excites you, then strongly consider pursuing a, a, a more formal education. There's so many programs out there that can be done and from a distance. Our program, knowyourwellness.org, um, Stephen Horn has some phenomenal programs, um, Trinity, Westbrook, Dr. Christopher. I mean, the list goes on of places you can go and invest a little of your time and, a, and really reasonable um, amounts of money to really learn the form and function of the body so you can start to understand why the symptoms are happening and really have a way to truly balance your body as a whole. So I just want to really encourage you. Again, we are really excited with what we do. We do some really unique things at the um, International Institute of Natural Wellness Education. We um, have you work direct with a, um, with a clinical advisor. So you start to learn how to apply things. We also um, have you learn from over a dozen different professors from around the world, all online based. So we're really um, pleased and we hope you check us out. But again, whether it's us or someone else, make the commitment to, to take this beyond where you are and make it a lifelong journey to understand the amazing creation that is our body. Because we're just allowing you to, to listen to a few classes, I want to be clear that we can answer medical questions. Don't Please don't email us, post on YouTube, well, what does this mean? I was diagnosed with this condition. What does that mean? I'm sorry, we that's not what we do. This is not a substitute for medical advice, and I don't say that legally. I say that ethically and in every other way, well, legally as well, but I, we really don't do that. So um, this lecture is a part of our Master Herbology and Advanced Nutrition program. So with that, brief introduction. Introduction. Let's jump into what I mentioned that is so exciting. Five element theory, an, a, a really comprehensive thing, and we are going to make it simple for you. We're going to help you understand it in a more concise way than you have up until now. So what I want to do today, we're going to talk specifically about the fire element. This is part one in our fire element lecture. So I really, let me zoom out here so you, like, we can make sure that everybody understands a few basic things. When we're talking about five element theory, a couple of things you need to be aware of is what is five, uh, a five element? Five element comes from thousands of years of history in traditional Chinese medicine. And it's, in essence, the simplest way to explain it, it's a way to look at the body as a whole. It's a way to understand how the body interacts. Why do we name them things like fire, wood, water, earth? Uh, pretty simple is to be able to understand what's going on. I mean, I don't have to tell when I'm teaching it that water puts out fire. Everybody knows that. Or that fire burns up wood. Those are things you understand. So by assigning an element to it, it helps you understand the interactions. But again, I want you to think of it as a grouping of organ systems, muscles, structures, sense organs. Uh, you know, if we grouped your body, every part of your body, every part of your personality, every part of who you are into five groups, that's what five element theory is. It's a way to look at the body as a whole. Now, real quickly, energy throws people off a lot. We talk about energy. We're going to be talking about fire energy um, today. I especially run into this when I get to talking about earth and I talk about earth energy and some people that may be familiar with manual therapies or energy healing therapies, when they say earth energy, they're talking about the grounding energy that comes from the earth. I want to be real clear. That's not what we're talking about here. So when I say fire energy. I'm talking about the function of all of those organ systems and structures that are a part of that fire category. So you can see right up here, right in front of you, that's, let me zoom in, that's what I'm talking about. The blood vessels, the small intestine, the reproduction, the heart, all of these systems together are what I will refer to as fire energy. I'm not talking about some external energy force that comes in. No, I'm, I'm talking about the function of those systems, whether they're overactive or underactive. So I just really want to be clear on that. Now, like I mentioned, this is exciting. You're going to really, we're going to dive into it. Um, but I want to be clear on the two things that we're going to cover. We're going to cover the dominant element 
and how to balance that the fire element. Now every person has a what we would call a dominant element. If I zoom back out here, you'll agree with me that everyone on here today has a liver, a heart, you know, has lungs, has uh, you know the the functions of the body. So all of these systems are in you. You don't you aren't just one. You have fire, wood, water, air, earth, metal. You have all of these elements within you. But with that you have one that is going to be your dominant. It starts to explain why you like to do the things you do. It's, it, it impacts the features of your body. It impacts your genetic uh, predispositions to illnesses. It doesn't mean you're going to have a problem with a given imbalance. It just means you could be genetically um, predisposed to potential weaknesses in that area. It helps understand why you respond the way you do when you're stressed and why somebody else responds differently when they're stressed. Why your emotions are the way they are. So there is a dominant element. That's what we're going to talk about, but I'll also commonly refer to balancing that element. And what I mean by that is I'm, a, I'm for example, I'm a redhead. I am 100% fire element. So that is who I am. However, based on life circumstances, I might have a dysfunction in my earth element. That, so the, the things that I'm talking about when I refer to a dominant element aren't really going to apply to me in that category. But I'm still going to want to balance that earth element that's a little out of balance. So that's what I want you to think of when you're thinking in your head. Think of two different categories. One, understanding a dominant element so you understand how to recognize and work with and work around those that are a dominant fire element. And also how to balance the fire element because everybody at one time or another may be out of balance when it comes to your fire element. Okay, So with that, I want to be um, one other point that I want to make you aware of is we talk about um, you know dominant elements and it's a real fun thing people like to talk about it they like to read through it I mean these printouts that you have before you that you've printed out in that are in your class um, print out a lot of times people will give them out to um, patients it's really fun for people to read there are ways that people like to assess dominant elements there are um, questionnaires there's several different ones online and they sometimes work really well there's also what we're going to talk about, face analysis, where you assess based on face and body features. And for a lot of people, those are extremely accurate. You can look at somebody based on their face and their features, and you can tell what their dominant element is. There is also um, birthdays. There's some people that have really spent time trying to tie this to times of the month when you were born and really strongly believe that that is a really easy indicator. What I the reason I don't we don't teach face analysis first, and the reason we didn't just hand you a link to go do a quick test online and have all the people you're working with do that, is there is exceptions to every single one of those. So I want to caution you that the, if you're going to be an effective master herbalist and advanced nutrition consultant, the most useful tool you have is understanding the elements. Then you're welcome to use the quick questionnaires, the face analysis, you know, the what day they were, what time of the year they were born. All those things could be common factors, but don't let one of those dominate your decision. You need to make sure you understand. So with that, let's talk about this chart that you have before you. So I've circled some things that you don't have circled on your chart. Do you see this blue circle on that's around dominant element? So all of these factors that we're talking about here are dominant, are specific to someone that is dom has that as a dominant element, the dominant fire element, if you will. Now, the emotions, you'll see deficiency, balance, and excess. Now, those are not necessarily specific to someone that's a dominant element. It's just somebody that might have a deficiency or an excess in fire energy or fire um, element energy. However, a dominant element regardless of whether it's fire or dominant wood, because that's their dominant element, it isn't uncommon for them to go out of balance in that energy. So being a fire, for example, me personally, I am a, I have a very outgoing, fiery personality. Because of that, it's easy for me to wear out my fire energy and get depleted. So if I was a dominant fire, I might especially pay attention 
to the balancing techniques outlined here. Then we go to the third category here, understanding. This is understanding people who are a dominant fire element. So again, this helps you get an understanding. And then the fourth one is balancing. That doesn't apply to whether you're fire or not. If you're trying to balance an element, that's what we're talking about here. So I want you to, again, be real clear. That's kind of how we use this chart. So the top one here, let's jump right into it, face analysis. Now we're going to do a whole, we do a whole class. If you, you haven't got it yet, if you're just doing the, this class, then a couple sections later, you'll go through a whole e-learning module on face analysis for dominant elements. So I'm not going to talk a lot about it. I want you to understand the element before we ever talk about how to assess it from a face analysis standpoint. But you can see right here, you know, the common things that you'll see right here, um, you know, pointy, angled, sharp corners, narrow chin, those are real common things in a face structure. And we'll show you some pictures and help you see that. Um, this is one that seems to be more common in, um, in fires, um, is this rapid speech, um, you know, the, the mannerisms right here. Do you see this one right here? Ma oops, um, uh, the mannerisms. We'll just move that down so we're not uh, making it hard to read there. This rapid speech, quick body movements, those are real common. Um, thank goodness that that computer just corrects my uh, bad drawing here. You know, those are you're going to see real common in people. Um, they get people fired up. This particular mannerism seem not not all the mannerisms in all the elements are as noticeable as they are in a fire element. But again, would I just say, oh, that person is a fire element based on their mannerisms? No, not at all. But you will see, especially with the fire element, this is a is a common one. The bright eyes, big smile. When we talk about in face analysis, you'll notice this is one of the two elements that when they smile real big often the edges of their mouth are outside of the pupil line. If you were to drop a line straight down the pupil, the center pupil of their eye, you'll notice the smile goes out wider than that line. That's another real common one to see with fire. So, but let's talk through those. The rapid speech um, gets people fired up. Leader, oh, that's a really common one. Fires are often leaders. That's not uncommon for good or bad. Now, the energy, um, they are emotional ext extremes. They are, you know, fire. I mean, think of fire. You don't have it, you're cold, you got it, you are hot. I mean, it is an emotional extreme. They, they have a lot of a capacity for empathy, self-expression, um, very expressive people. Um, they're attention-seeking, talkative, social. I mean, these, again, the mannerisms and energies are just really especially common when we're talking about fire. So, you know, really consider those. Now, the pathologies. Now, again, I want to remind you, pathology is not saying that, that fires have heart problems. No, no, no. It's saying because of that, those group of organ systems, if we go back to where we were talking right here, this group of organ systems and body systems, um, because they're all grouped together, and you're using a lot of that energy, they have a gen they could become de depleted, deficient. You want to watch it. So when you're working, and I can't stress this enough, I say it with all of the elements, but you got to hear me when it comes to heart. I don't know what it is, but you could explain it with everything to somebody and you know help them understand this but if they hear the words heart problems they will run to the cardiologist and say that crazy herbalist told me I was about to have a heart attack be very careful with this particular element if you talk about p potential pathologies that you don't get them worried about having heart issues but you just know as you're working with them that anxiety um, heart issues, insomnia. I mean, why insomnia? That's easy. They're, they're fired up. They're, they're going. They have so much fire. They can't calm down. Fatigue, skin conditions. I mean, as I'm reading these, I'm sure some of you are already going, oh, I know that person. <laughs> they sleep. Um, bad complexion. I mean, how many redheads do you know that have poor complexion? Poor circulation, um, broken veins, really all common things that you'll see. Now, virtues and faults. They are... Um, you know, they live in the now. That, that, that can be good and bad. It's just they live in the now. Accomplishment. Um, they, um, they, if they lose balance, 
They really can get out of balance easily. They're easily overwhelmed. So they're fired up and going, but they can get easily overwhelmed. They live in the now, accomplishment, um, but loss of balance can really affect that. So those are all common characteristics that I want you to be really clear on on a dominant fire element. Now let's shift gears. Actually, um, since we're talking about that, we're going to skip down to this third section right here. And we're going to talk about understanding a fire element. The top one we have there, relish, excitement, and delight in intimacy. Boy, if I was going to pick one that really sums up a dominant fire element, this one right here just really might take the cake. I mean, if you've known a, a fire, this really says a lot about them. They delight in intimacy, very passionate people. And I'm not talking just sexually. In every area, they're very passionate, and they're intimate with their friends as well as those that they have an intimate relationship. They're just, they hug people. They're very intimate and they relish excitement. Um, don't do not do well in the mundane, um, day after day, the same thing. That really doesn't sit well. They like things hot and vibrant and bright. Very, very true of fires. They're hot, not necessarily temperature, because redheads you think of, they don't like um, to heat a lot, and redheads are often fire. So when I say they like it hot and vibrant, I don't mean from a temperature standpoint. I mean from a energy standpoint, energetically. You know, they're passionate things, you know. Um, any, anybody who's married to a redhead knows they delight in intimacy, very passionate, like the heat of romance, um, very vibrant. Everything they do is vibrant and, and big, okay? Passionate, um, empathetic. Um, keenly intuitive. This is really common. Watch this heavily with fire people. They often, and sometimes you can help them bring this out by just making it aware, and they'll start to go, you know, that is something. You know, so often for people, by just giving them the the ability and telling them it's okay that that's who they are allows them to feel okay with with focusing on that. And you'll find that a lot of them when you tell them you probably are passionate, all of a sudden they won't feel that imbalance that they've been feeling in the relationship. Like, why am I more passionate? They'll just realize that's who they are, and that's okay. We need to celebrate the differences in each other. Um, they love sensation, sentiment, and drama. They believe in the power of charisma and desire. Um, primary concern is stimulation. That kind of goes back. I always, uh, my wife always laughs when I'm teaching this class and talks about that. You know, like things new and interesting. They don't get stagnant. I mean, think of fire. It doesn't stay burning in one place. It's all over. It trying to find new things to be re-stimulated. Now, spirit, conscious, warm, enthusiasm. Um, the, you know, these are really common things to, to think of when you think of a fire person. Um, all of these right here. Um, unity of life, another really common one. Um, they, they like to connect people. Um, communication, expression, talkers, you know, very expressive people. You know, sometimes just understanding. Now, the other one I mentioned all of the blues were, were part of dominant. So up here on the emotion, the one we skipped, you see how the bottom two have fear, and then the archetype and spirit. These are also specific to somebody that's a fire element. Fire, anybody who's known a fire, been married to a fire, worked with a fire, you'll know their biggest fear is disgrace. They want to do it well, they want to be big, they want to go all the way, they don't want to be disgraced. That's a very big thing for fire. So, you're not a fire, that's fine. But you're working with one. You're, you have a client that's a fire. Know that that's important to them. Be conscious to not point out, um, that isn't correct, that's wrong. They don't like that. They, they want, the disgrace is hard for them. The archetype is a wizard, often they're classic, figuring new things out and trying new herbal formulas. The spirit is mind, very um, very creative, think a lot in their head, that's very much a, a fire, um, fire characteristic. So, you know, again, we kind of look at all of these things just to understand. Now let's talk about a couple of things oh, um, specific to balancing. So again, in reiteration, if I'm a fire element, it's really common that I might become either deficient, um, right here, you see this deficiency, I might have a deficiency, or 
I might have an excess of fire energy. Not because uh, you know anybody could, but because I'm a fire, that could happen. So now when a fire is balanced, they're optimistic, enthusiasm, a lot of courage, visionary. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're the leaders. They really are the leaders. But when that fire goes out and they become deficient, or when anybody runs out of that fire energy, they, you know, maybe you're not a fire, but you end up, you're the person that always gets put in a leadership position. Okay, so you're not the fire, you're definitely not, but you're, you're in that leadership position. You're able to do it, you have the courage, the vision, um, the sentiment to fire people up and get them creating things. But you know you reach that point where you just don't have any more of it in you. And how do you feel? You feel apathy, you're just flat. Like, ugh, joyless. Nothing excites you anymore. Because fire is the energy with all of us that gives us excitement and enthusiasm. And kind of. And so you feel very, you know, if I was to, to focus on some, shutdown is a very, uh, very real one. Um, withdrawn, oftentimes, but I think apathy and flat, boy, those are real, real accurate ones right there. Um, let me make that a little straighter. You know, I draw the same when I draw on a dry erase board. It's not any better when I'm teaching on, on the computer. <laughs> but you see apathy and flat, that is really important. Um, timid, sometimes. Low self-esteem, very often. You know, the fire, the people you think have so much um, self-confidence often can go to a real low self-esteem place when that fire runs out. So be really aware of that. Now when they have excess. So this is somebody that has an excess of fire. They want to be leaving. They want to be a part. But they don't have any outlets for that. It's the fire kept up in the fireplace. And they just don't aren't able. They kind of be, can, can become bitter. Because everybody else, as you look at it, everybody else, oh, they're not doing it right. They're, if I was leading that, that's, you know, I would, I'd be doing it differently. And so as you start to notice those things, you start to realize, oh, that person has a little excess fire energy. So, we'll talk about what you might do for that. But bitter is a real common one. Um, they, they can become manic, dominant. Oh, yes, very dominant. And that, again, isn't a person that's necessarily a fire element. Just anybody that is, is having too much fire energy. They can become dominant, overexcitable. My goodness, yeah, that's really a fire thing. They're, you know, overexcitable. Um, and, and not always, but manipulative, immature, over um, stimulated, yeah, you know, critical. Critical is probably another really common one I would underline for you. Those are all common things in somebody that has an excess of fire energy. So now that we think of whether you are a fire element or not, we kind of get what happens when you have an excess. Let's talk for a minute about balancing. Now, some of this goes without saying. Because you start to understand what a fire element is, you start to understand they delight in intimacy, new, new things. Um, they like to be a leader. So what are outlets for that fire energy? If somebody happens to have an excess, well, giving them a project, letting them be that leader. Of course, that's going to fulfill that for them because that's that fire energy. They want to be stimulated, giving them something new um, pass, to be passionate about. All those things are going to, to provide an outlet for this excess fire energy. Again, whether you're a fire, dominant fire element or not, we want you to understand if you're working with someone that come in, a lot of times they come in and they are bitter and they have all these um, characteristics and they come to you asking, well, what herb will fix this? Well, a lot of times it's not just the herbs but helping them understand themselves so that they are able to change the characteristics that are causing it. Now, when we talk about foods, oily fish, um, salads, um, you know, with bitter leaves, um, you know, your um, kales and arugulas and dandelion leaves and radicchio, all those are really good. Um, dates, um, legumes and fruits, herb, herbal teas um, made from leaves and flowers. Um, not as much, you know, when we're talking wood element, it might be the um, more the dandelion roots and the, and the root teas. A fire is going to be more the leafy teas, the chamomile teas. I mean, think about, you know, the calming down. You've got all this fire energy you can't call down. Think about, you know, passion flower and chamomile and, and these 
these things that are, are calming and kind of help give an outlet for those those parts of you. Um, those are going to be real good. Peppermint, all of those. Now, foods um, that that uh, to avoid. Huh, that's kind of again. If you understand the fire elements, you're going to understand coffee and sugar and excess are, are really they're coffee and sugar are stimulants. You you have too much fire energy. You don't want to. Now on the flip side, this balancing that we talk of right here this this is how to balance so what i you know what we have right here foods to avoid that's assuming that you had too too much um so you if you have too much you don't want to stimulate more on the other hand something like excess spicy foods if you're out of fire you're very deficient a good spicy meal gets the circulation going might help that cause so again it's not enough to just say in every case this is the you know what you do you've got to understand these characteristics you know and that's why we make these charts you know you you read them over and over and you have a patient and you or a client rather and you get them out and you look through them in front of them i'll often read things to the clients um the ones i often will read i don't really read the pathologies so I'm going to X that out because otherwise they'll go, oh, I had that once. That must be the problem. So don't read the pathologies. Virtues and faults are, again, hard because people don't want to fess up to their faults. So the ones that I'll often read are going to be to somebody, if I'm saying I think this might be what you are, might be their energies, mannerisms in, in some cases. But the biggest one I often will read is these right here the balance excess and deficiency Oop, um, but i uh, but i never just do excess or just deficiency because people don't want to just hear the bad so i'll often say and i usually start with the balance i'll say you know you probably have the potential of being optimistic and having enthusiasm and courage and visionary and you know being good to, to bring out sentiment and inspire people and a really good leader and they'll smile yeah but maybe sometimes that is out of balance. And then I might talk about these other two. And the other one, and probably the most common that I read um, with people, is going to be this one right here. This category on understanding fire elements. That's just really a useful one for you when you're working with a client to say, let me read these off and see if some of these. Now, I don't even usually ask them a question. The reason I say that is if I tell them that, I'm just going to read and see if some of these apply. I'll be halfway through the list before their head is just bobbing. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, they, usually you'll find one of these groupings that people relate to so completely that it becomes very, very common for them to, to say. But again, I'm going to go off of what I've talked to them. I'm going to go off their face shape. I might have them take a test. I might ask when they were born. I might look at their um, intake form that has their health history and see if that uh, applies. I'm going to look at several things before I make that distinction of that's what they are. Now healing reactions, the last one on the list. This is very, very useful one I want you to, to have access to. Um, really, again, they like to smile and laugh, be passionate, new things, communicate, love. Bitter foods are really good. Um, you know, we talked about that a little up top. Um, childlike wonder. Wow. If I had to say one thing that, that fit with fires, it might be childlike wonder. I mean, you know, my, I, I'm, a, I'm a scientist, so I love studying about everything. But when I get out of fire, my wife laughs at me a little because I like to study new things, be it, you know, more advanced physics research or you know, drag out all the astronomy equipment we have, uh, you know, as an amateur astronomist and, and spend hours under the stars just to kind of rediscover the excitement for learning and new things, new projects. Wow, do we have new projects as fires. So love your fires, let them have the new projects, rediscover that childlike wonder, um, feet on the ground. Grounding is so good for them. Um, but not always easy to get them to slow down enough to ground when they're fires, but that's really a good one. Now, the last one I want to mention here is early to bed. One of the most important and one of the hardest.
<laughs> People always laugh at me. The fire's in the room when I'm teaching my big classes. We've got 40 and 50 students. They just, you know, in the lecture hall, and they just laugh. All the fires, you can see them nodding their head like, oh, I'm sure it would be good to go to bed early, but who does that? Because they're going so many. So what you want them to understand is that's the goal. So during, they need to stop earlier in the day to get grounded, to rediscover childlike wonder, to eat some bitter foods, to laugh, to smile, to have fun times with friends, to do those things so that then come nightfall, they have a chance of actually sleeping good. So again, I, uh, this I, I'm confident will give you a better understanding of, of what a fire energy is what it's it's useful for whether you're a dominant fire element or like all of us at different times you are out of balance or in balance with the fire elements this is a really useful tool um, to have on hand so stay with us for part two we're going to jump over to the five element chart and we're going to talk about the different body systems associated with this element so thank you hold on we'll be right back <laughs> 